We now move to questions of the Minister of Regional Development. And question number nine has been withdrawn. And I call George Robertson. Mr. Uh, question one. No. Uh, my department is currently developing a scheme proposal for a minor improvement at this junction, which will widen the Greystone Road on its approach to Broad Road and provide additional capacity for vehicles turning left and right out of this junction. As a result, there should be a, a reduction in queues and delays, which in turn should ease the frustration experienced by some drivers waiting to turn out of the junction. Whilst there are a number of uh, worthwhile schemes across Northern Ireland competing for inclusion in my department's minor works programmes with uh, costs uh, far exceeding the resources available, I am, however, hopeful that this scheme can be progressed at the earliest opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Sp uh, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, is, is this uh, is a main arterial route from Nuntendere to Korean? Would the minister not agree that urgent action needs to be taken as soon as possible on this very, very dangerous junction? Um, because of, there is a lot of traffic movement in that area. And I would encourage the minister to do all in his power uh, to rectify that uh, particular junction. The member for his uh, supplementary uh, question, and uh, obviously um, a full assessment has taken place uh, uh, at this particular junction. Uh, preliminary uh, design has indicated an estimated cost of almost 46,000 to carry out this work. Um, uh, it is something that uh, we are uh, clearly aware of. Uh, and I am hopeful uh, that we can see progress on this particular scheme uh, in the not too distant future. John Dunn, Sir Dunn, Speaker. Thank the Minister for his answer and his continuing support for the North West. The Minister, of course, is aware that he inherited a long list of goodies promised by his predecessor, including a bypass at Ballykelly. Dare I ask the Minister where in the order of events does that now rest? I'm grateful to the uh, member for his uh, supplementary uh, for his uh, for his question, uh, and, and indeed uh, thank him for his kind comments uh, as to my commitment to uh, roads all over Northern Ireland, not just the North West. Uh, could I say that uh, in relation to the Valley Kelly uh, uh, bypass, the, the, the investment delivery plan uh, for roads includes uh, the dualing of seven kilometres of the A26 Frosses Road between Larryford Crossroads and Drones Road. Um, the department took ownership of the land required to build the scheme in January, uh, enabling um, work uh, to remove hedges uh, to be complete and temporary fencing uh, has been um, uh, erected on, on, the, on the boundary. Uh, I note his comments particularly on Bally Kelly uh, and uh, will provide him with perhaps a, a, a fuller answer to his uh, question. Raymond McCartney. Mr. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for his answers. In, in reply to George Robinson, he, he alluded to this, what, what could be described perhaps as a smaller scheme than perhaps some of the big major schemes and the importance of them locally. And, and with that in mind, can I welcome the fact that there's been an announcement on the Bunkrana Road this morning because sometimes minor schemes are of great importance. To the member for his supplementary question, and of course, minor schemes are particularly important at the start of election week. Um, <laughs> and uh, the, the press offices are, are hot, I think, uh, welcoming uh, catching other people's apples and uh, variously uh, reacting to positive news that I've been able to bring uh, across the country in terms of many uh, uh, road improvements, be it resurfacing or structural demands. And I'm content enough to, for, for others to share in my reflected glory, but, um, <laughs> but, 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 but nevertheless, uh, I think it is important that um, money is retained and uh, specifically targeted at a range of minor schemes which um, can improve um, the lives, literally, of, of, of a great many people, particularly in, in rural parts. Uh, and I think it's important that, uh, that uh, I, as Minister, um, uh, I'm allowed uh, to, to focus on schemes of that nature and get the necessary finance made available to me to achieve schemes like that. Roy Banks. Mr. Banks. Question number two. 
Mr. Speaker, I can advise the member that work is well underway on the, uh, on the SU, uh, A2 Shore Road scheme at, at Great Island. Um, the contractor is approximately midway through a very tight 120-week uh, programme, uh, which involves upgrading uh, to dual uh, carriageway standard some 3.5 uh, kilometres of the A2 between Jordanstown uh, Road and Sea Park. Improvements will also include four new roundabouts at Shore Avenue, Shorelands, Station Road, uh, Green Island and Sea Park. Uh, work began in March 2013 and is programmed for completion in summer 2015. To date, there have been approximately 300,000 man-hours worked on the project. This is equivalent to 180 people working full-time on this project for a year. Construction of a new carriageway for Carrick-Fergus bound uh, traffic is currently ongoing. Uh, while traffic uh, uses the existing road adjacent to it, it will later be reconstructed to become the Belfast-bound carriageway. Between Jordanstown Road and Station Road, accommodation works for adjacent properties, retaining walls, utility diversions, culvert construction and construction of the carriageway are all ongoing. Between Shore Avenue and Shorelands, curbs are in place, and road construction up to base coast level has been uh, completed. Um, Along the offline uh, section between Station Road and Sea Park, uh, the beams for uh, Winfield Lane Bridge are in place. Between Station Road and Winfield Lane, curbs are in place, and road construction is complete up to base course level. Between Winfield Lane and Sea Park, the earth earthworks are at an advanced stage, while work is ongoing on the curbing and laying of the sto stone, stone sub base. Uh, throughout the traffic section of work site, one lane of traffic is being maintained in each direction, matching the traffic conditions prior to the scheme commencing. Thanks. I thank the Minister for his answer. I'm pleased that, like the A8, the A2 at Green Island scheme is progressing well. But with the renewed interest uh, in cycling uh, following the, the uh, Giro d'Italia, uh, would the Minister outline the extent of the cycle network that is associated with the A2 at Green Island? and acknowledge that there is considerable um, opportunity to extend the cycle network both in Carrick Fergus and link the whole area to the Belfast Cycling Network. I'm grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary uh, question and indeed in terms of the A2, um, I have to say I'm particularly gratified uh, uh, as a minister to have brought that scheme uh, not only to its starting blocks but now uh, uh, as we work through it because I, I am conscious that that, that was a scheme that was long awaited in that particular region. Promises uh, had been made uh, in previous years about it but I have to say uh, I take some pride that it is the Ulster Unionist Party that is delivering uh, the A2 uh, scheme. I am very pleased at that. Can I say in relation to the uh, cycling provision that he has indeed raised, uh, my department has incorporated uh, cycling facilities within the scheme itself and indeed we have plans uh, to further extend the network in uh, the Carrick-Fergus uh, direction. The scheme comprises widening of the existing road between Lockshore Park and Station Road, Green Island. Uh, this section uh, has been designed as an urban dual carriageway and, and will uh, in incorporate a three and a half metre wide combined footway and cycleway along the shore side of the road as far as Station Road. Uh, between Station Road and Sea Park, a new offline uh, rural dual carriageway is being constructed, and pedestrians and cyclists will continue to use the existing uh, but quiet bypassed section of the existing uh, uh, Shore Road. So I think um, we, we have proposals, and not only that, we are prepared to work uh, with others. Uh, and of course, uh, this is election week, and new councils um, uh, will be elected um, uh, to take. Uh, office uh, and uh, uh, my department looks forward to working with local government as we seek to promote uh, and enhance cycling facilities. Stuart Dixon. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and thank the Minister for the progress uh, update that he's brought to us and, and congratulations thus far in terms of the amount of work that has been done. But, Minister, can I ask you a very specific question in relation to properties 2, 4, and 6, Station Road, Green Island? which as a result of the layout of the road would now appear to be in a very hazardous uh, traffic situation when the road would be completed if it is done as currently designed. And would the Minister agree with me that there is an urgent need to look at the potential for further blighted properties in this area? I am grateful to the uh, member for his supplementary question. He will um, 
uh, I think, uh, accept fairly that uh, it will be a matter that I will uh, need to refer to uh, and uh, to correspond to him uh, directly on that issue. David Hillage. Thanks very much, Mr. Speaker, and I welcome the update today on what has been a very successfully managed scheme, although some local politicians have been dining out on it for some time now. But could the minister give some indication, perhaps potentially, £60 million project, are you aware of how successful any of the social clauses were within the contract? Well, I uh, as part, th thank the member for his uh, supplementary question. Uh, as part of all contracts now, we, uh, we, we expect uh, and insist that uh, social uh, contracts are, are part of that and uh, the, uh, the opportunity, particularly for young people. Uh, to uh, avail of skills, and, and certainly I am aware, having uh, paid a, recent, a relatively recent visit uh, on site and met some of the apprenticeships, uh, uh, apprentices involved there, uh, and I was encouraged to hear, because obviously a uh, former responsibility uh, of mine was uh, employment and learning, I was encouraged to see uh, that working uh, effectively, and uh, to report. That, uh, that, that the contractors themselves were very pleased with the progress and the standard and the quality uh, of, the, uh, of the people who were engaged in that programme. Uh, I welcome that and I will continue to ensure that uh, uh, it remains part uh, of the contracts that we award. Question three. Uh, the protection of um, Vulnerable uh, road users such as children, the elderly and cyclists uh, is a top priority for my department. Over previous years, traffic calming measures have been uh, the most successful intervention in uh, reducing road user uh, casualties in residential areas. Features used include road humps, central islands and gateway signage, all of which uh, reduce vehicle speeds to around 20 miles per hour. In parts of Great Britain, uh, signed only 20 mile per hour sites, uh, uh, signed only 20 miles per hour speed limits have been introduced in residential and other areas where there are high numbers of pedestrians and cyclists. Although up to now uh, there has been limited research into how effective they are at reducing uh, vehicle speeds and increasing cycling and walking activity, I believe it is worth uh, trialling uh, the concept at five locations in Northern Ireland. These locations are uh, City Centre Belfast, Langley Road in Ballina Hinch, the Rosses in Ballamina, Whitehall in Ballycastle, and Merville Garden Village in White Abbey. Average, speed, uh, average vehicle speed surveys and public consultation at the five trial sites have been completed. The necessary traffic regulation orders are currently being processed, and I anticipate the trial reduced speed limits uh, should be in place by the end of the year. Oh my God. I thank the Minister for his answer. Can the Minister tell us how many other, uh, how many 20 mile an hour zones do we presently have, and what, uh, and what um, mileage of our roads is covered by these present zones? Well, grateful to the member uh, for his supplementary question, and indeed uh, the member will know that uh, there, there are actually um, quite a considerable number. Uh, of de facto 20 mile per hour uh, um, uh, schemes. I don't have the exact number. Uh, but uh, again, it, it is interesting to reflect on, on the feedback of, uh, of, on the success uh, of those uh, and how uh, the, the, uh, the travelling public uh, uh, view them, and as well as the issue of enforcement, because that is, that is an important aspect. We've been in consultation with the PSNI. Uh, in relation uh, to this uh, whole issue. It is fair to say that um, uh, enforcement um, uh, would be a major resource factor for the PSNI, and I think they, they have a concern uh, with that. However, I think uh, the very fact that um, limits uh, exist in built-up areas uh, will surely have um, a positive effect in terms of um, calming down uh, the speed of traffic uh, in those areas. Jimmy Spratt, Mr. Spratt. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, just on the issue of enforcement uh, and, and the comments of the minister, two weeks ago, in an evidence session to the uh, committee, the PS and I were very concerned uh, in relation to enforcement and in relation to resources. 
uh, and indicated that uh, other measures, such as calming and other measures that can be used, should be looked at holistically uh, by themselves, your department uh, and officials. Uh, and uh, would that not be a better approach? And what discussions have recently taken place with the PSNI in relation to enforcement? Because enforcement will be required. To the member for his uh, supplementary question, uh, and, and indeed I, I have indicated that uh, that we've had uh, discussions with the PSNI on, on this very issue, and uh, heard at first hand uh, some of the concerns that they have expressed. Uh, um, that, in, in part, is one reason why we've proceeded cautiously uh, identifying the five pilot areas uh, to uh, carry out a full and proper study um, as to the patterns that will emerge. That in itself, uh, it will be necessary to take some time to assess all of those issues, um, including uh, the issue uh, of enforcement. And I think uh, I look forward to uh, updating uh, the House on reports as to how these schemes are progressing. But I think uh, I, I would caution members it will take a considerable period of time before we would move to a, a, a whole scale um, implementation uh, because of some of the issues that, uh, that have been raised even through this question. Uh, Tommy Elliott. Mr. Elliott. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister so far. I, I note he, he did say that there was limited research in the UK of what had taken place. Can the Minister identify the, the local buy-in that there has been from, from residents in areas where it has been implemented in the UK and in those five pilot areas proposed in Northern Ireland, if there's been discussions with the locals there to see if there's local buy-in? Well, I, I agree entirely with the, uh, with the Member's point. I think um, I, I, I would uh, much prefer um, uh, to uh, see the level of cooperation, uh, local cooperation. Um, developed uh, before simply imposing solutions on uh, uh, communities and I think that's, that will be an important aspect even of the trials that we have or that we are prepared to, to initiate because unless there is local buy-in as in all of these things um, then uh, the prospect for su success is re reduced and so uh, I would uh, be encouraging that uh, local community buy-in from public representatives and indeed uh, from uh, uh, community groups and the local population wherever these schemes are initially tried out or if there is um, um, a request to move forward on a broader basis. Ian McCarthy. Mr. McCarthy. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. Uh, question number four to the Minister. Uh, before I um, respond to the Member's question, I would like to remind the House that procurement legislation uh, requires above threshold uh, procurements to be ad uh, advertised in the European Journal. Uh, in addition, public sector procurements are subject to open competition in order uh, to secure best value for money uh, in accordance with managing public money in uh, Northern Ireland. In response to the question, I can ad advise that my department procures the vast majority of its contracts through two centres of procurement expertise. Name, uh, namely the Central Procurement Directorate within DFP for Supplies and Services and the Department's own Centre of Procurement Expertise for Construction-Related uh, Contracts. During 2013-14, the Department awarded 68 contracts procured through these Centres of Procurement Expertise. Uh, of these contracts, 43 uh, were awarded to companies based in Northern Ireland. This represents 63% of the contracts awarded. The, the approximate value of these contracts was almost £300 million, of which £243 million was awarded to companies based in Northern Ireland. This represents 81% of the value of contracts awarded. I can also confirm that the remaining contracts uh, were awarded to a mix of companies from Great Britain and multinational companies that have offices in Northern Ireland. I thank the, the, the Minister for his response, and of course we acknowledge the uh, details that he had uh, initiated in the, the uh, first answer to my question. But what steps has the, um, as, as the Minister taken to ensure that all procurement contracts maximise the potential for social inclusion throughout, social um, clauses throughout Northern Ireland? Uh, thank the member for his supplementary uh, uh, question and indeed um, uh, 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 reference, I suppose, to the earlier point uh, that. Uh, uh, both I and, and my department are 
uh, determined uh, to, to ensure that uh, the social contract and the social element uh, of contracts uh, uh, awarded um, can give particularly young people or um, unemployed people the opportunity uh, to um, uh, improve their skills and get back into uh, uh, the job market. And, uh, uh, the same applies uh, wherever possible with the, um, these contracts, which are, of course, subject uh, to um, EU legislation. Speaker, I thank the Minister for his answer. Would the Minister accept that Northern Ireland has a tremendous reputation for having a lot of major cons construction companies, civil engineering companies and public works contractors that have done excellent work throughout these islands? And that some of them, including those members of the Construction Players Federation, are expressing some frustration at how the Central Procurement Directorate is operating, and therefore would he agree that maybe social clauses could help in that regard? To the, to the member for his, uh, uh, his question. And indeed, um, I, I, I join with him in, in adding my tribute, uh, particularly to the construction industry in Northern Ireland, who uh, under the most difficult of uh, economic circumstances, uh, continue to pr uh, provide employment prospects um, uh, in all parts uh, of the uh, of, of, of United Kingdom uh, and indeed parts of Europe. Um, and, I, and I say that, um, and whilst I, I'm, I'm pleased that Northern Ireland firms are winning contracts in other places, I think, uh, and I hope like him, uh, I would much prefer it to be the case that we could uh, award more contracts in Northern Ireland based contracts for uh, the construction uh, industry, either road construction or, or other aspects of it, because that is uh, a continual um, uh, matter that is raised uh, when I meet um, uh, members from the industry who um, acknowledge uh, the amount of work that they do in, in Scotland, uh, England and Wales and indeed uh, the Republic of Ireland, but would actually love the opportunity to do more work at home. Uh, and I hope that economic conditions and uh, um, uh, monies that can be awarded to my department from uh, the executive uh, will assist in that because that in, in turn uh, is the secret uh, to uh, um, uh, making real strides within the local economy to improve things. Robin Swan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I congratulate the Minister on the high percentage of contracts that his department awards to Northern Ireland companies. But can the Minister advise what percentage of procurement contracts his arms, department's arm's length bodies award to Northern Ireland or GP companies? To the uh, member for his supplementary and, and indeed for um, his, his comments. Um, in terms of my department's uh, arms length bodies, uh, Northern Ireland Water and Nithco, uh, they are also uh, centres of procurement expertise. During 2013 14, they awarded 372 contracts, of which 258 were uh, awarded to companies based in Northern Ireland. This represents 69% uh, of the contracts awarded. Uh, the approximate value of these contracts was nearly £260 uh, million, uh, pounds, of which almost £160 million was awarded to companies based in Northern Ireland. And again, this represents 62% uh, of the value of contracts uh, awarded. Um, although above threshold contracts are, are advertised through the European Journal in, in accordance with procurement legislation, I am happy to confirm uh, that the majority of the remaining contracts were awarded to a mix of companies from Great Britain and multinational companies that have offices in Northern Ireland. Number five. Mr. Speaker, uh, discussions between uh, officials in my department and uh, DOE planning uh, have taken place uh, and are currently ongoing as part of the normal planning process. Uh, uh, the Speaker and the House will know it would be unusual uh, for ministers to be directly involved uh, at this stage of a planning application. Uh, my department is a statutory consultee in the planning process and will respond to DOE, DOE planning as required through the time span of the application. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his answer. Uh, would the Minister agree with me that the road infrastructure in the Molusk area already carries a, a large uh, number of heavy vehicles and is wholly unsuitable for any additional heavy traffic which the proposed facility would bring? Well, I'm grateful to the uh, member for her uh, supplementary question. Uh, and indeed, I, I, uh, 
don't want to second guess uh, any of the discussions that are necessary to have or the consultations that are uh, by law take place um, uh, to determine uh, this particular application. I am aware of the, uh, the network uh, of roads in the area uh, and the limitations. I'm also aware of the potential controversies around uh, this application uh, and I think uh, we will await for due process. Could I thank the Minister for his reply to Ms Cameron's question? But uh, I, I know that the Minister is constrained what he can say. Uh, but is the Minister aware of the widespread opposition that exists uh, to the ARC 21 facility, particularly in relation to the uh, overburdening of the road infrastructure in that area by large lorries delivering large tonnage of waste in that area? member for his uh, supplementary question uh, and the, the member will know that uh, ultimate responsibility for this decision uh, will rest with his colleague Mark Gates Durkin, uh, the Minister for the Environment uh, and uh, not my job to tell Mark Durkin what to do or how to do it. <laughs> Jerry Kelly. Sir, um, for his answer, and I, I know he's trying to be very sure respecting this, but I mean, he has heard that this, and he knows himself that this is a very sensitive uh, project. And would he be taking that into consideration if he was asked to look at the uh, the road uh, structures around uh, this facility, which which has massive uh, local uh, disagreement? Grateful to the member for a supplementary question. Uh, you can try all you like, but it hasn't reached my table yet. <laughs> Danny Kent. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. May I thank the Minister for his, his answer so far. Um, but would the Minister or would his department ensure that they meet with the community groups in Molusk, Mayfield, and the whole of the surrounding areas? Because that's where the concern in, is, and as we've already heard, it is extremely strong at the moment. Well, again, I'm grateful to the Member for his supplementary question. And uh, if it is considered appropriate and at the right time, I, I'm happy to give uh, positive consideration to that request. I understand the member uh, recently met with officials from my department to discuss a number of alternative sites he had proposed uh, for the provision of park and ride facilities uh, uh, on the A6 at Dungiven. Uh, following discussions between my officials, TransLink and uh, the PSNI, the site at Macarboy remains the option favoured and has the greatest uh, likelihood of being delivered in the short term. Uh, thank the Minister for his answer. Uh, does the Minister agree with me that when, not if, but when the Dungiven Bypass does proceed, that a much bigger area might be required uh, to the west of the town rather than the Maraboy site or to the east? I'm grateful to the member for his um, uh, supplementary uh, question and um, uh, I, I, I accept the point uh, that he makes. I think identifying a, an appropriate site uh, is not without its challenges uh, and obviously we will uh, continue to work uh, to see uh, whether any appropriate sites can be identified um, uh, in the event of the, of the scheme being uh, carried forward. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I take on board the Minister's comment about the work ongoing to try and get a suitable site. Will he try and ensure that, given in Dungiven there are a number of terror-related murals and signs and posters, uh, that the, whatever site is identified is free from that sort of uh, activity, in order that people from right around the Dungiven area will be able to use it? Grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question, and, uh, and of course I, I, I'm not a, a fan or a supporter in any way of, of, of such murals or memorials. Uh, and uh, I know the, the member, as a previous uh, minister for regional development, um, encountered uh, the same issues as to how to deal with those uh, effectively and, and properly, and yet uh, not start an epidemic uh, of, of either new murals and, uh, and, and such uh, uh, things. Um, uh, I, I very much hope that uh, people, as we move forward, uh, will, be, will be sensible and, uh, uh, about these issues and um, with proper community consultation uh, 
uh, many of these uh, items which offend uh, so many of the law-abiding society uh, from both sections of the community uh, can be e eased out uh, and removed uh, from, uh, from the landscape. Concludes our questions to the Minister. We now move to topical questions. And Thomas Buchanan, who is not in his place. Michaela Boyle. Margaret Cam Cordia, uh, can I ask the Minister, uh, given that uh, residents in the village of Clary Straban who have contacted me and indeed our local DRD office uh, down through the years in terms of the uh, large numbers of articulated lorries travelling through the village, will the Minister uh, look at ways of addressing the ever increasing volumes of our traffic going through the village? Gormogat. Grateful to the member for, uh, for her question, and I know it's an issue that uh, she is uh, providing uh, assembly questions on. Um, uh, and uh, we uh, I will give an undertaking that we will uh, look at, at the assessment um, uh, of current traffic movements to see if any improvements are, are uh, possible. It is um, limited, I think, uh, our, our capacity to do so, but I'm happy to, uh, to give further consideration to it. Uh, can I thank the Minister for his response and indeed extend an invitation to see for himself uh, come to Clary um, just how narrow the street is in terms of the capacity that's going down there. But can I further ask the Minister, um, can he look at ways of um, introducing weight restriction uh, along that street for Mogut? Grateful to the member uh, for her uh, supplementary question and indeed um, her invitation to, to go and look at a narrow street in Clady. Um, uh, and of course, uh, weight restrictions uh, of themselves, uh, one would have to weigh up uh, the, the potential negative uh, impacts on that on the local business community and the, and the haulage companies who, who use it. Um, all of these things are, 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 are a balance. Uh, I'm happy to, to look uh, in more detail uh, whether or not it will involve uh, an on-site visit. Uh, well, we can, we can consider that too, but uh, in the meantime, we will look um, at uh, any measures uh, or anything that we can offer to, uh, uh, to reduce uh, some of the impacts that are clearly uh, evident. Mr. Ross. Mr. Ross. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Over the last two weekends, we've had uh, great racing in two wheels, both from the, the North West 200 and the Giro d'Italia. Um, in an earlier uh, answer, he said to Mr. Beggs about developing cycle lanes on, on the A2. Can I ask the Minister what his plans are to develop cycling lanes right across Northern Ireland on the cycling routes, and has he a longer term strategy for doing so? Grateful to the, to, to the member for his um, supplementary question. And indeed, uh, uh, the last two weeks, uh, in terms of cycling and Motor uh, bike racing um, uh, have, I think, put Northern Ireland on the truly, uh, on, on, uh, truly on the international stage and the prestige. Uh, obviously, I attended um, both events. Uh, the Giro d'Italia was very, very successful. I was very pleased and, and very hopeful uh, that we can continue to build the legacy of, of uh, the cycling revolution uh, that I that I so want and so desire. Uh, in terms of uh, improving our overall infrastructure. Yes, uh, it will cost money. Yes, indeed, uh, it will take time. But I think uh, the momentum uh, clearly uh, is with us. Uh, and, uh, and I very much hope that, that as uh, the cycling unit, which I have established uh, within the department, as it brings forward its strategy for cycling, not only in Belfast, but all over Northern Ireland, we can uh, look at ways uh, where we can improve uh, the the, uh, the infrastructure and make it as safe as we possibly can. And of course, on, on the issue of safety, I also had the opportunity and the privilege to attend the, the Northwest 200, uh, uh, both on Thursday night and on Saturday. Um, it was a very spectacular um, uh, road racing event. Unfortunately, uh, that brings uh, the sport itself. Uh, there are attendant uh, dangers, uh, and I want to, on behalf of the whole House, uh, extend uh, our, our, our concern uh, and our good wishes uh, to the families of uh, Simon Andrews and Frank Petracola, uh, um, recovering as they are in um, the Royal Victoria Hospital, uh, and to wish them and their family and friends well, but also to pay tribute to the organisers and to the competitors, uh, competitors 
of what was uh, a truly memorable uh, North West 200. Alistair Ross. Thank you, and I think that the, the House would, of course, echo the, the comments from the, the Minister. In terms of cycling, it's been a growing sport in recent years. Clearly, from the success of the Giro, many more people will be interested in getting a bicycle and, and using that to cycle to, to work or to school uh, or, indeed, for, for sporting purposes. One of the criticisms that comes from cycling uh, clubs in Northern Ireland or cyclists themselves is that many of the cycle lanes which are currently uh, in place perhaps haven't been maintained well or in some instances can be actually be more dangerous for them. So will he commit to uh, ensure that his cycling unit within his department will work closely with uh, cycling clubs throughout Northern Ireland to ensure we develop uh, not only well-maintained cycling lanes and, and, and cycling routes, uh, but also ones that will improve safety for those who are out on the roads uh, during the week? Grateful to the member for his, uh, uh, for his question. Uh, and indeed, uh, that, I think, will be the, uh, the secret uh, as we go forward, how we can uh, improve the infrastructure, both the existing interest, uh, infrastructure and uh, new infrastructure that will make cycling um, a, 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 an even more viable alternative mode of transport for people to enjoy. And uh, can I say, uh, very happy to work with uh, cycling clubs, uh, as indeed organisations like Sustrans and, uh, and other uh, from the cycling fraternity, and, and uh, I'm very positive that we can move forward on this. Uh, my recent visit to Copenhagen proved that there are substantial benefits here to be accrued, uh, not just in terms of the environment, not just in terms of the financial benefits, uh, the economic benefits for those uh, uh, who will cycle, but the quality of lifestyle uh, and the improvement to health. And I think those are the significant uh, benefits that we can reach out for that Northern Ireland can be part of and uh, that we can look forward to uh, by working together uh, and making cycling um, a mode of transport that is not simply middle-aged men in Lycra, but uh, it is uh, um, something that is enjoyed by uh, the entire community. Okay. Mr. Carver. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Minister, in the light of uh, a number of developments and developers who have actually went bankrupt, uh, leaving developments with what I deemed, deemed to be unfinished roads, uh, with no mechanism to actually finish off the infrastructure within those developments, uh, is there any help and assistance that the Department can bring forward to uh, alleviate some of those problems? I'm grateful to the member for his, uh, his question. And, um, uh, I, I can inform him that, that we have had meetings uh, with uh, those within uh, the, the, uh, the construction industry and indeed the legal profession, uh, the Law Society uh, and others as to how we can address uh, the, the legacy issues uh, that have been caused as a result of economic circumstances beyond perhaps uh, everyone's control. It is, a, it is a substantial challenge because um, you know, uh, the, there are not um, unlimited uh, amounts of money to, to be provided, uh, and indeed, in terms of any new development, uh, the bonding system uh, is in place to ensure that such services can be funded uh, by the developer uh, on behalf of the of the uh, 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 of the householders he is uh, building those houses for. I am aware uh, of those issues. The Committee of Regional Development. Uh, recently published uh, uh, its report in, uh, into these issues. Uh, we're st continuing to study that report and hoping to bring forward uh, to implement some of the. Uh, and there should be no prompting, I think, from the back benches. Uh, <laughs> I don't think prompting is allowed, Mr. Speaker. I have to say, even in a stage whisper. But. Um, uh, but I think we, we, we will continue to look at uh, the implementation of uh, the, uh, uh, the recommendations contained within that report. Okay. Thank the Minister for his answers thus far. But uh, I appreciate that that addresses some and there's a, a, uh, an opportunity for some of those uh, developments to be finished out. I'm thinking in particular of one in Ballyclare where there was uh, a major road to be developed by the developer. The town is, is in crisis point from a congestion point of view. And unless the department come forward to do something, nothing is going to happen and the town is going to remain in gridlock for another generation 
before anything is done there. And that's in relation to a bypass road that was proposed. Many other areas, and we did have members asking questions in relation to other areas. Uh, but I'm wondering, is there a possibility that they will uh, divvy up and do something in relation to provision of a bypass road in Ballyclare? Grateful to the member. Uh, not sure if you were prompted to. Uh, to recall uh, that as part of the, the supplementary, but I will accept it on the basis of uh, the, the, the spirit in which it is offered. I am aware of, of the Ballyclare situation, uh, and indeed I uh, have had meetings with um, my party colleague Danny Kinahan uh, uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the issue. And, um, I think um, it, is, it is a challenging issue. That was a, a link road that was to be provided as a, consequence, as a positive consequence of a new development, which is clearly uh, encountered severe difficulties. Um, uh, whether or not um, it, the scheme uh, that is necessary to um, assist with traffic movement uh, in the area uh, is of sufficient high priority within my department at the moment um, is also uh, an issue, but we will continue to look uh, at the issue to see um, if we can explore um, a more positive outcome. Yeah. Minister, there, there's an issue in my constituency of Ahar County Tyrone where there are a number of roads that need to be upgraded to an adaptable standard. And I've engaged with road service on this matter and they will not obviously provide any funding for it. Can you outline any potential funding uh, to assist residents with this issue? Gourmet Yogurt. Thank the member for her question. That uh, is, is really the nub of the issue, um, the, the legacy issue of uh, bonds that are not uh, or cannot be enforced for any particular reason, uh, leaving uh, some housing developments unfinished, uh, uh, which in turn leads to the frust frustration of those who have purchased houses in good faith. Um, and uh, I mean, I have to say, in, in terms of expecting. Um, central government through my department to, to fund uh, all of those improvements, uh, I have to say, is not, uh, um, it is not possible um, uh, unless a vast sum of money in the region of hundreds of millions of pounds province-wide uh, to, to, uh, to carry out that work. Uh, and, uh, Listening to the finance minister recently, I, I, I don't have a sense that he has that uh, uh, available to give to me at this point. Thank the minister for his response. And just for clarification, it is a rural road that I'm, I'm speaking about, so I apologise for that. Minister, can you outline what powers the, the new council will have to deal with the issue of unadoptable roads? Grateful to the member for um, her. her uh, supplementary question. Um, I, I, at the moment, uh, my understanding, we, we, we are not transferring responsibility for minor roads uh, to local government. I know that had been an early suggestion in the, in the early days, uh, uh, in the last century, in the previous century, uh, when uh, local government reform was being uh, considered. Uh, that's not uh, on the agenda at, at present and uh, I still have full responsibility for maintaining uh, and upgrading uh, the, the entire road network. Jonathan Craig, Mr. Craig. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Minister, recently at the North West, we have seen what happened with the um, two accidents on that course. Given that the uh, premier motorcycle race is coming up, the Ulster Grand Prix, which just happens to be in my constituency, um, can you guarantee that any lessons around safety issues that have uh, been learnt on the North West will actually be transferred to the Ulster Grand Prix and its organisers? I to the member uh, for his um, question, and, uh, and, and he will indeed know and, and confirm that safety is paramount for the organisers of all road races. Uh, and that doesn't uh, need me to give advice on that or to persuade them uh, to, to do that. But certainly in, in, in all of the, um, uh, uh, the road racing events that, that I sanction and, and sign uh, the orders for, uh, I know that all of the organisers, be it the Tandrigi 100, be it um, Dunrod or the North West or the other meetings, uh, safety is uh, the main priority and that is how it should be. Yep. I thank the Minister for that answer. 
In previous years, your department has been uh, very good in working with the organisers and has greatly improved the road safety of that course. Um, can the Minister give us assurances that if any other road safety issues are highlighted, that funds may become available to actually implement them prior to the racing occurring this year? I'm grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question. Uh, and, you know, we, we work closely and liaise with uh, the organising bodies of uh, all of the races. Um, and, um, uh, I think we, uh, in the past we have a very good record uh, in terms of um, improving surfaces uh, and uh, uh, enhancing safety. That will continue to be the case. Order members, I'm going to close questions to the Regional Development Minister.